The Minecraft community has been going through a real Me Too movement as of late, and on the 9th of March 2024, a 19-year-old, known online as Katie Bugs, would come forward with her story. Within a 30-minute stream, she would break down into tears several times as she described an unwanted sexual experience with a content creator eight years older than her at a convention back in the summer of 2023. This story came out not too long after the Wilbur Soot allegations, and seemingly inspired by Shelby Grace's testimony, Katie's story was what everyone on Twitch and Twitter were talking about. Very similar to Shelby's case, once this stream dropped, people online immediately began to speculate who this person was, and very quickly, a prime suspect was deduced. This is how Katie described her alleged assaulter. He was someone I had once watched, and he was eight years older than me, and far more powerful. Very quickly, people narrowed down that the 26-year-old large creator who attended VidCon that year was none other than George Not Found. If you don't know him, George Not Found is a Minecraft creator, probably best known for being one of Dream's best friends. What's said to have happened on that summer night between Katie and George is about to be discussed, and it's my mission here to try and be as respectful as possible towards the situation. I'm going to bring forward the information, explanations, allegations, and contradictions from both Katie and George. I'm not going to be mentioning their friend statements because they clearly are just very, very biased, and also a lot of their statements seem to contradict each other. I feel like if I mention them all, this video would just get way too messy, so we're just going to be primarily focusing on what's been said by George and Katie. Both Katie's initial statement and George's reply have both been uploaded to their respective Twitch channels, and I'll link the two of them in the description for you to look at. They're both about 30 minutes each, but only by watching them both, as well as reading their Twitter statements, can you really have the best grasp on who you believe. So first of all, let's go into the pair's initial stories so that we can see where they agreed upon before we get into where they differed. I'll keep this segment brief because their stories, as I'm sure you can guess, differed quite a lot. So Katie and a few of her friends had been at Dream's hotel room one night at VidCon when she met George. The first night, nothing scandalous happened. At this point, it could be assumed that George was unaware of Katie's age. This is important because at the time, George was 26 and Katie was 18 years old. A few days later at the convention, Katie would go back to Dream's hotel room with a few of her friends, and this night seemed to be much heavier than the last. Her and her friends had been drinking at a party that they had been to prior, and they were already drunk when they went to Dream's room. Dream and George already had alcohol there, and when the girls arrived, the attendants started playing drinking games. Katie and George this night were sat next to each other, which was when the incident of George touching her occurred. Throughout the night, more and more friends left or passed out, and early in the morning, Katie and George left at the same time. George tried to convince Katie to come into the lift with him, but she did not, and the two parted ways. Both of them agree on this rough outline of how the night played out, but it's in the differences of their statements which is really where this debate lies. So first up to bat was the pair's recollection of how many people were at this gathering. Katie, within her initial statement, claimed that she was accompanied by two other girls, and upstairs were two boys, Dream and George. This would make a group of five. That night, I went up to his room. Back at the hotel room again were the two friends and us three girls. Within George's reply, though, he contradicts that and claims that there were two other girls there, along with one of George's friends. But Katie, her best friend, and three other of her friends ended up coming to the room which had me, Dream, and my online friend that I just met. I also chose to mention my online friend. It doesn't really add to the story, but she never mentioned him or the eighth person that she brought with. So I'm just saying it because that's how it happened. And I want to make sure the story is straight. We'll get into why they said different numbers later on, because this has since been cleared up. But at least within their initial statements, Katie mentioned only five, whereas George mentioned eight. Regardless, George later provides screenshots within his stream that proves that all of the girls within this group chat that were about to attend the party seemed very excited to go. And this is slightly different to how Katie described it. Us three were at a party when it got boring and whether the girl wanted to leave and go to his room or he asked us who I cannot remember. Once again, I was drunker than the night before and was willing to go anywhere. 
I was naive, and so we went back. I remember a friend seeing me in the lobby <laughs> on the way. They were worried by the way I was acting and asked if I was okay. I was really drunk and it was an eerie feeling like they could sense something was wrong. And I wondered what would have happened if I had picked up on it. There was more alcohol in the room and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. They said they would join us in drinking and insisted on drinking games and already drunk. I obviously Comply. These screenshots would also disprove what Katie was saying within her initial stream that it was the boys who insisted on playing drinking games. Whether it be Katie misremembering or misarticulating herself, these screenshots paint a different picture. That said, mere moments later within Katie's stream, she brings up one of the most contentious disagreements. She claims that during a drinking game, she was asked a question in which she revealed her age, telling everybody that she was 18 years old. Right before the incident, I had answered a question about my age. We were playing a drinking game and talking about sex, and I admitted to everyone in the room that I was 18 and that I was a virgin at the time. I remember back now to him answering questions during the game about back when he was 19 and when he was in college, noticing how my future was his past, and I wondered how he felt sitting so close me. In George's telling of the story, however, things went a little bit different. And again, to clarify, I actually didn't know how old she was, despite her claiming that I did, just because it was in her bio. And it was clear to anyone there that she was not uncomfortable with me sitting next to her. I also want to address a fact that she claimed that would confirm that I know her age. She said that she had answered a question about her age during a drinking game, and we were talking about sex, and that she admitted to everyone in the room that she was 18 and a virgin at the time. I just don't remember this happening. I'm not saying this to just pretend like it didn't happen. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I did not hear it happen. We're not just all sitting down and not moving. It's a, you know, it's a chaotic environment. I could have been getting a drink. I could have been talking to someone else. I just did not know that that was said. Hearing the pair's statements on the matter, I'll leave it up to you on whether George knew her age or not, but this is what he had to say on the matter. She actually assumed I didn't know her age because she had never said it. But then later I had actually DM'd her on Instagram. And because of this, she says that it is confirmed that I know her age. To give some context to this scenario and to why I didn't know her age, my perspective of things is that I am with people that are over the age of 21 in a scenario where we are doing things that people that are over the age of 21 are doing, like drinking. And also the people that came, came from an event where they had very heavy security. This was an official VidCon after party and with previous VidCon after parties, I even had problems getting into these events. There was actually a picture where it was shown that they had this 21 plus wristband on one of their ha one of their one of their wrists. So a massive question here lies on whether George missed her age in her bio and didn't hear her state that she was 18. Though Katie, to this very day, includes her age within her Instagram bio, so do you think that he would have seen that? George's defence was that because he saw at least one of them wearing a 21 plus wristband, and because they were engaging in activities in which you have to legally be 21 or older to participate in, he just blindly accepted that they were all at least 21. George, I'd assume, would know what a 21 plus wristband would look like, but missing something that's right in plain sight, like an age in a bio, is suspicious. Especially since, in both of their statements, they agreed that they messaged for a while after. Even if George initially missed her being 18, you would have to think that he just never checked her profile again, because if he was romantically interested in her, he would likely be checking out her profile after the fact. And if he did, that would mean that he missed her age several times. He claims that he noticed it afterwards, at least a month after VidCon, but that's something that we'll get into later. So for now, I'll leave that up to your own judgement. Moving on with the contradictions, they seem to differ in discussing just how George touched Katie. Katie, within her initial statement, described it like this. It was a little after that, when I had resorted to playing games on my phone when it happened. Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch, in front of everyone. He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no, still staring at my phone. I was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people. The fact that everyone else was sitting around us, watching us, including my best friend, 
and that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked for it to be. George, on the other hand, recalled the situation very differently. We had been cuddling for, I'd say, around an hour at this point, playing the game, talking, and just having fun. And for clarity, I had my hand around her waist above her clothes. So with her statement where she's saying that she's resorting to playing games on her phone, I just don't really understand it. And I think that the picture that she's painting is really dark, when in reality, she seemed very happy with the situation. The way it's phrased makes it sound like it just happened out of nowhere, when in reality, we'd been cuddling for over an hour at this point, and it was not out of nowhere. It was also around half an hour until I started moving my hand further up, and the way it's phrased just makes it seem like it happened pretty instantly and pretty quickly. There was nothing quick about it, it was very slow, and I was very cautious about it and making sure that she was comfortable throughout the process. In this situation, they're both giving drastically different statements. Katie described this as out of nowhere, whereas George describes this as an act that had been building for hours. So either A, one of these two are lying about this, or B, perhaps they were so drunk that they recalled different versions of the same event. One important difference that the pair made was about Katie herself and her movement. Katie said this. I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. I stayed there for a while, hoping my stillness could make me disappear. I eventually had to stand up after many minutes for it to stop. George, on the other hand, had this to say. I also want to comment on how she said that she had to stand up after many minutes for, for it to stop. She did get up multiple times throughout the night. For example, to go to the bathroom, to get a drink. Also, when her friends left, she got up to say goodbye to them, and she would come back to the same scenario. What George is implying here is that if what he's saying is true, and that him touching her was more of a gradual reaction, her getting up and then coming to sit back down in the exact same place on several different occasions would be her non-verbally saying that she's okay with this. If she wasn't okay with it, she would have gone to sit elsewhere. Katie said that she was afraid of causing a scene, or even too scared to move, but surely if George's reply is to be believed, merely sitting in a different seat to remove yourself from the scenario would be a subtle way to get away from it. Be that as it may, Katie within her stream then went on to say that the night eventually drew to a close. This is the last interaction that the pair had told through both of their perspectives. I went to leave and the older guy decided to leave with me. We walked to the elevators where I didn't get on. He then pretended that the elevator was broken and that he couldn't leave, telling me to get in the elevator to prove it was broken. And then after a few minutes, he ended the night with a guess I'm going now, leaving with a wounded puppy look. This is phrased in a way that makes me look kind of creepy, to be honest. She's basically saying she left, so I decided to leave too, which is not the case. What actually happened is Dream had decided he was too tired and was going to bed. So the night was over and we all left. She then goes on to tell a story about the elevator and how I joked about it being broken to try to get her to go in with me. So Katie actually had her own hotel room on the same floor as Dream. So she actually didn't have to take the elevator. She walked me to the elevator when she didn't have to and said goodnight to me, which was nice of her. I did joke with her about coming in the elevator by pretending that it was broken. I would essentially, I went into the elevator, the doors closed and I would press the doors open button to make it open again. I did this a few times and she didn't go along with it which i respectfully took obviously and ended up just going down to my room but yeah she she didn't have to take the elevator yet she chose to walk with me to the elevator to say good night to me which i think is interesting given how she's saying how she was so upset with it george finished his response by bringing up some points that i'd now like to discuss So George's initial response hinged on the idea that Katie was okay with him touching her in the moment, but later changed her mind. The pair would continue to speak over text for at least a month after the interaction. VidCon 2023 was in late June, and George's last message was in late July. Apparently, it was then that he discovered her true age and stopped talking to her. However, from George's point of view, if she did feel as though she had been violated that night, to continue banterous text exchanges for at least a month after the fact would imply that she initially thought that it was okay, but later changed her mind. 
He asserted that he thought her statement wasn't meant to be malicious by any means, but he believed as though she had been convinced by her friends ever since that what went on was not consented. Why would she come out and say it like this? Why is she saying this? Now, I don't think she's purposefully being malicious or trying to hurt me or ruin my career or anything like that. But what I do think is that she is surrounded by a friend group that completely despises me and my friend group. And this is quite a specific scenario that probably doesn't really happen that much, especially publicly. So it, it's kind of we it's kind of hard to talk about it. But I think after VidCon, she, she obviously had told some of her friends about what happened. Whether or not that was in a negative connotation, I do not know. I wasn't part of these conversations, of course. But she clearly told them about this scenario. Now, when these people that are around you all completely despise me and my friends, they're obviously going to look on this poorly. Now, I think it seems very likely that after eight months of you being around friends that hate me and my friends and constantly talking badly about us, obviously that is going to affect the way that you view the experience. And it's going to make you look at it differently. You're going to second guess it. You're going to be thinking about it. And clearly it changed the way that she thought about it. Now, George dropped his statement on the 11th of March. And after his stream went live, an entire Pandora's box was opened. From my experience on Twitter, most people were calling for George not found to be arrested or deported or to rot in hell. Other people, though, were saying that they believed in George and felt as though his recollection of the events seemed more likely. Some were even calling Casey a liar or a clout chaser. Before we move on to their later responses, just very quickly, I want to bring up a few things that I saw within George and Katie's videos, which I thought were really strange to include because throughout both of their streams, they both play around with various wordings and inclusions that I think are really worth mentioning. These could potentially be manipulative ways to try and get the audience over on their side, or perhaps they're just meaningless and they've just been thrown in there. I'll leave that up to you. Firstly, Katie throughout her stream on multiple different occasions describes herself as freshly 18. I was freshly 18. They knew that I was freshly 18. Now, when you say you're freshly 18, it draws viewers into thinking that you just turned 18 a couple of days ago, or maybe a few weeks ago, at a push, maybe a month. In Katie's case, if I'm not mistaken, she turned 18 in January. This incident happened in June, so it had been five months. It says that on her famous birthdays page, and she included a shot of ice skating at the Brighton Pavilion in her birthday vlog, which shuts in early January each year. And though this doesn't make it at all acceptable on George's behalf, the wording of being freshly 18 is very specific and seems to be as damaging as possible to George's reputation without being the whole truth. As for George, I noticed that within his stream, he included a screenshot of her using the word gay as an insult, despite the fact that it's not needed. This part of the text conversation really didn't add much and could have been easily cropped out, but he chose not to. Was this George trying to maybe deflect a little bit or attack her character by subtly branding her and her friends as homophobic? Well, that's up to you to decide. I just thought it was a bit strange. Not long after George's stream, Katie came out on Twitter with a very large response. Her perspective was that George, within his own stream, admitted to touching her, committing a sexual act with her on the couch while she was drunk in front of people without verbally getting her to say that it was okay. The big question here is whether you think that consent must always be a verbally agreed upon contract. From George's perspective, although she never verbally said that it was okay, he claims that she was laughing, cuddling, and at multiple points stood up to do things before returning to the exact same spot. He thought that her body language and demeanor was implying that she was okay. From her perspective, because she never verbally said yes, and she was drunk and eight years younger, that means it wasn't okay. Throughout the rest of this post, she provides her response to the differences that we've already discussed. So let's go through them once more. Firstly, it appears as though she only mentioned five people within her story because, according to her, the other three people didn't really play much of a part. It seems as though they left a lot earlier. George's friend she apparently didn't talk to, and two of her friends didn't stay for long. 
George's friend though apparently sent this message, which would confirm that they were cuddling fairly early on, and that the unnamed male friend knew her age. Early on in the statement, Katie makes the point that the screenshots that George provided were of a group chat that he wasn't even a part of. This group chat seemingly had Dream and Katie as well as her friends in it. The only message from Katie herself within these screenshots was about a drinking game that they had played on the first night. Apparently, she wanted to know the name of the app so that she could play it with other friends. She calls this defence from George irrelevant, and also states that the only reason why she went back the second night was because her friends wanted to, and she wanted to go and party with them. According to her, she wanted to go and meet an unnamed creator who had been at Dreams, but this person had left just before. Regardless, within her initial stream, Katie made it appear as though the guys were just plying them with drinks, which now doesn't seem to be the case. There was more alcohol in the room, and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. They said they would join us in drinking, and insisted on drinking games, and already drunk, I obviously complied. Based upon these screenshots, however, it seems as though everyone wanted to play drinking games, and it wasn't just Dream and George like Katie had previously claimed. Moving on, let's talk about the age situation. According to Katie, George responded to a conversation concerning her age. If I'm not mistaken in saying, Katie would reveal during the drinking game that she was still a virgin at 18 years old. Dream said that George was 19 when he lost his virginity, so he should still drink. And then, George drank. Maybe he wasn't listening and this was all just a coincidence. Maybe he heard George should drink and drank. Or maybe he heard the entire thing. There is no way to know this for sure because none of us were there. And as for them, they were drunk nine months ago. Things are forgotten. Details are lost. That said, Katie continues to speak about her age, and she brings up a very solid point. George mentions within his own stream that he's always been overly cautious around topics of consent. I've always been overly cautious with consent, and this is not just because I'm a creator. I've been like this since before I was a creator, and I think that's just the way I am and just the way it should be. So for him to miss so many signs that she was only 18 doesn't really match up with his claim. 18 is of course legal in California, but it's dodgy for a 26 year old to be making moves on an 18 year old if they know their age, to say the very least. For him to miss the 18 in her bio, but then automatically assume that she's 21 or older because of a single wristband, is it a bit of a stretch? It makes me wonder why George himself never expressly said that he saw any particular person wearing this wristband. Pay very close attention to what he says here because it's kind of suspicious. Also since Katie's stream, I've gone back and reviewed texts from the time and there was actually a picture where it was shown that they had this 21 plus wristband on one of their hat, one of their one of their wrists. Notice, George himself never expressly outwardly says that he ever saw Katie wearing this wristband, or he never saw Ghosty wearing it, or any of their friends for that matter. He just says that upon reviewing evidence and looking over pictures and videos, he saw this picture. It kind of sounds like he never saw this wristband at the time, but now he's using it as a defense in retrospect. And Katie never even wore a 21 plus wristband in the first place. She mentions that within her VidCon vlog, she had a shot of her wristband being cut off as she left, but this wristband is not 18 plus. One of her friends has one, but this would mean that George saw a 21 plus wristband on one friend and then automatically assumed that they were all 21 or older, which doesn't exactly sound too cautious. George is from the UK, surely he would know that underage drinking exists. The complete and utter blind acceptance that they're all 21 or older is suspicious. 21 year olds are likely going to be hanging out with people who are roughly within the same age range as them. I'd anticipate that they'd be associating with people roughly aged between 18 and say their mid 20s for the most part. This blind acceptance that they were all 21 or older is potentially a stretch. You also need to ask yourself, does she actually look 21? And of course this is going to be subjective, but personally for me I would say no. She probably looks about her age, I would guess maybe. 18, 19, 20 at a push. Also, according to this screenshot, Dream at the very least knew about the age gap apparently, but just didn't seem to care. Whether this was because he was drunk, or the friend just misremembered it, or Dream doesn't actually see anything wrong between a 26 year old and an 18 year old getting intimate, use your own judgement. 
Next up to bat, the touching accusations. George's statement about this being a slow, gradual movement seemed to be better corroborated by the screenshots that Katie herself provided within this Twitter post. Katie said that George's friend left early and that he was insignificant enough to leave him out of her initial story. However, this message proves that they were physically engaging with each other for at least a little while. George says that they were cuddling for hours, whereas Katie's initial statement makes it seem much more abrupt. As I mentioned before, we had previously been cuddling on this couch for around an hour, but I did place my hand on her waist under her shirt. It was a little after that when I had resorted to playing games on my phone when it happened. Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch. This omission that they had been cuddling for a while is strange on Katie's part. If the friend left early enough to not be relevant to the story, then surely they were in fact cuddling for hours like George said. In her defense, she was drunk, and anyone that's been extremely drunk in the past knows that time moves a bit differently. You forget minutes, or sometimes even hours on end, so maybe that's what happened. Also, maybe she just wasn't expecting it, so to her it seemed more abrupt. However, potentially leaving out or misconstruing such a vital part of the story is suspicious. She could be right and it just happened out of nowhere, but I think this screenshot simultaneously adds evidence to the fact that George knew her age because it seems as though everyone at the party did, but also it appears as though he was physically intimate with her for at least a short time. This leads on well to the next topic, Katie's defense of her movement. Katie now admits that she got up on several different occasions, which isn't exactly what she said at first. I stayed there for a while, hoping my stillness could make me disappear. I eventually had to stand up after many minutes for it to stop. In this stream, she does not mention that she got up several different times. Maybe at the time she just didn't find it important, but it's never said. In the Twitter post though, she's saying that she did get up several times, but decided to sit back with George as to not hurt his ego or embarrass anyone. She admits that this was a dumb thought process. However, she herself does admit that her friend at one point got so drunk that she was throwing up. She claims that she didn't know, so perhaps she was just too drunk to think about it, but that right there would give her another very easy out. Depending on how long her friend was gone, surely at one point you'd say that you want to go and check on them. I'll leave this one up to you whether you think that Katie is extremely cautious and shy, even when extremely drunk. Because alcohol does remove inhibitions and makes people a lot more confident and less shy. Is what she's saying true and she just wanted to make it through the night like she says in the other screenshots? I should mention that Katie herself provided us with some screenshots that should help us deduce this. It is very telling that within these two screenshots, two different people wanted to check up on her after the fact. I, like many people, have been to house parties in the past where I've looked across the crowded room and I've seen a guy talking to a girl trying to chat her up and she's just very clearly disinterested, but he doesn't know, he's just oblivious to it. Perhaps this experience was shared by other attendees of this gathering. That said, within this very same screenshots is Katie's reply, which is where things get a bit murky. She writes, Yes, I'm okay. It was definitely a bit weird, but I was drunk, so I didn't feel like doing anything to stop it anyway, and it's over now. There was also another reply in which she wrote, Like, in the moment I was chilling, but thinking back on it, I'm sweating a little bit. Like, damn. Especially after verifying so he knew I was 18. These two screenshots are very telling because this isn't a nine month later recollection. These screenshots, provided they haven't been altered, was sent the very next day. She was under the impression the very next day that he knew that she was 18. However, her saying that in the moment she was chilling, but looking back on it, she's like, damn, that would help George's statement because at the time she was, as she puts it, chilling, but has since regretted it almost immediately. I should mention that at the time, she didn't know if George made her uncomfortable, so she definitely had reservations as it was going on, she just never vocalized it. Things here seem to be a lot more shades of gray than black and white. Katie then tries to debunk George's theory, saying that the reason that her friends hate him is because of that night. I'm not going to speak on that very much because there is just zero way I could possibly give any credible kind of 
information over because I just don't know these people. There is literally no evidence that I could possibly give over that could prove one person is right and one person is wrong because this beef is just between them. George seems to believe that something else is at play, whereas Casey asserts that their hatred can be traced back to that night. Whatever the truth is, only these two know for sure. Not long after Katie's Twitter response, George would come out with a Twitter post of his own. He would say that based upon her post, his perspective on that night and his overall conclusion had changed massively as she had introduced some new information that he claims he was not aware of before. He said that he has much more to say, but apologised to Katie. Within this post are a few things I want to take a moment to dissect. First of all, he claims that he had been made aware of things that he didn't know before. What was that? I would go out on a limb to assume that perhaps it was the text that was sent the day after the incident. Perhaps he now knows that from other people's perspectives outside himself and Katie, what happened looked wrong. This would be in complete contradiction to his claims that everyone who saw it at the time thought that she was enjoying herself. Again, this all happened within a four hour period, three, four hour period. And I was not given any sign of discomfort, unhappiness or anything along those lines. And again, it was the opposite of that. She was happy, she was laughing, she was smiling, and as far as I know, everyone else in the room would have thought the same at the time. It could be that reading these texts was the first time that George truly realised that he had misread the situation. Whatever it was, it's to my understanding that George has not yet disclosed that information, so anything I say would just merely be a guess. Some people though have made this out to be not such a big deal. Ajito, for example, tweeted out that many people have overblown the situation in a post that's seen around 2 million views. Many people replying to this post have expressed that they too think that George has been villainized on levels way above anything that he actually did. The political streamer Destiny, on the other hand, said that he thought that Katie was actually quite lucky. His reason being that her and her friends made a string of bad decisions that night and she was able to walk away relatively unscathed compared to what could have happened. This is such a lucky lesson learned. Like, okay, I was underage, drinking. I was already pretty dumb. Probably shouldn't go back to the hotel room with guys alone. Some guy kind of like felt me up a little bit, but nothing happened and then I left. That is a lucky scenario. That's lucky. Nothing happened. You're good. Like, holy sh what an easy way to learn a lesson without anything fucking insane happening. But days later, as people were still discussing this incident, dissecting it and analyzing the claims, George came out with a follow-up response. So this video dropped just as I was waking up on St. Patrick's Day. At this point, I was fairly close to finishing the video, I was probably about 75% of the way through, and George made a video response to Katie's Twitter post. He mentioned that he would in a tweet of his own, and some of the things that he mentioned within this video will surely spell either his fatality or forgiveness. So let's go through it. Firstly, George clarifies early within his response that his tweet was not an admission of guilt. First of all, I just want to make it clear that my tweet that I put out after my first statement wasn't somehow admitting to guilt or completely backtracking on what I originally said. A lot of people jumped on him for seeming to admit to it, but according to George, this was not the case. One of the first major rebuttals that he gives is to the screenshot that was apparently sent from his Japanese friend who was there. I've made quite a big point out of this screenshot within the video, because prior to George making a claim about this, it seemed as though the message both casted doubt upon Katie's claim that this came out of nowhere, but also legitimised her claim that George knew her age. Within George's response, he now claims that this message was not sent by his friend. So I reached out to my friend to talk to him about it, and it turns out that he actually didn't send this message. So there is a text that is claimed to be from you, yeah, I didn't send that text. Um, I found out about it when you sent it to me. Um, but yeah, I know that, that wasn't me. I don't know where they got that from. I didn't ask them for any of their phone numbers or anything like that. Now, up to this point, there have been a few holes in Katie's original story. Claims that she made that now appear to be misleading or overblown. I think that a lot of this could just be attributed to her being drunk and not being able to fully remember what happened on that night. Katie is obviously female, she was 18 years old at the time, she seems quite small in stature, and she's also American who stereotypically don't have the greatest tolerance for liquor, nor is she legally allowed to drink within her own country, meaning that she probably hasn't built up a great tolerance towards alcohol. 
George, on the other hand, is male. He seems a bit bigger than her, he's older, and he's legally been allowed to drink for almost a decade. I think it would be a safe bet to assume that he could handle his booze a bit better than Katie. I would make the assumption that if both Katie and George went into a room and fully described to the best of their knowledge what happened that night, telling the absolute truth and nothing else, George would be able to recall the events just a little bit better, unless he was extremely hungry going into it or drank severely more than Katie, just because he would be more tolerant towards alcohol and therefore he would be a little bit more sober uh, and would be able to remember events to a more accurate degree. Therefore, I think it's fair to give Katie a little bit more leeway when using drunkenness as an excuse for any inaccuracies. Also, Katie is very young still, she's only 19 years old as of right now, so I give her a little bit more leeway in the fact that George has a lot more life experience than her. I think that in the future she will probably look back at this and regret how she dealt with the situation in part. George, on the other hand, was 26 years old, he should have been the responsible adult, and he just was not. Before I say what I'm about to say next, we just need to remember that these are very real lives, very real emotions, and very real experiences lived. That said, Katie must have pulled this screenshot while absolutely sober. Their stories here are at complete odds with each other. One of them has at best made a gargantuan mistake that has unintentionally misled their audience and mistakenly skewed the narrative of this story, or at worst, intentionally lied. Despite the fact that a lot of people are now saying that this is just a non-story, because it's public, this now has serious ramifications for both Katie and George. This is a case of potential essay, and it's going to have a massive impact on anyone in the future who has experienced sexual misconduct and wants to come forward. The truth of what happened on that night is absolutely imperative, and the fact that something could have potentially been forged means one of three things. Either A, Katie is actually being very malicious here and has tried to hijack Shelby Grace's movement to unfairly cancel George. B, George is more heinous than we could have imagined and is now lying to cover his tracks in an essay case. Or C, one of them has been extremely incompetent when piecing their story together and has now unintentionally told hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people, something false. Keep in mind that if Katie herself has forged this, what's to say that she didn't forge any of the other screenshots? And if George has got his friend to lie, what's to say that he hasn't been lying the entire time? Now, George goes on to call his friend who allegedly sent the message, and the friend tries to explain the night from his point of view. According to his own testimony, he claims that he stayed for quite a long time. He also said that from his perspective, everything seemed quite above board. To me, it kind of seems like a misunderstanding. There wasn't really a thought in my mind that, like, oh, this, this girl, like, could be in some sort of danger, or she's being, like, on or anything like that because yeah even even though george is my friend if, if i noticed him doing anything that i wouldn't want someone i'm friends with to do then i would you know i would either would say something about it or not be a part of that situation she says that you left early on in the night could you talk about that i think around like 3 or three thirty, i went to go get tacos i think i got the party pack or something for some reason i couldn't believe i actually went and got tacos <laughs> I know for a fact that I got the tacos like extremely late. Like I had to go in their drive-thru even when I was in a car. Like I had to walk through their drive-thru and like order through their speaker. That was yeah. fun. This unnamed person could just be saying what George wants him to say. He could just be covering for his friend because up till now we don't actually know who he is. What he's saying should be given the same weight as everybody else. Also, his claim that he left to go and grab tacos on foot instead of ordering them in is a bit weird. Not impossible, but personally, when I'm at a party, I would order it to the door. Admittedly though, it was apparently 3am and he was drunk. It's strange behaviour, but not out of the realms of possibility. George also calls out multiple different instances of Katie within her stream, wording some things in quite a dark light. Things like plying the girls with alcohol, which I've already touched on, and the elevator situation, where, according to him, she phrased it to make it appear as though she was going to get in the elevator, but was weirded out by him, so chose to let him go first. I brought this up because from her stream, the way that it was told kind of implied that I followed her out, and then that she waited to take the next elevator instead of getting in with me, while I tried to convince her to get in. He also makes numerous statements about the power that he had in this incident. 
Katie's story relies on the fact that she felt as though she had to be complicit in George being physical, regardless of whether she wanted to or not, because that's the price you have to pay to be socializing with these large creators. I figured that's just how things were. That that was the price I had to pay to be there. George claims that he didn't realize at the time that because he's such a large creator, that he holds substantial power over other creators who interact with him. I can't invalidate Katie's claim because I'm just not inside her head, nor could I attest to George's obliviousness because I don't know him on a personal level. Their experiences might differ, but that doesn't make either of them wrong. George, however, seems to have put himself in a position of sympathy throughout this statement. On multiple occasions, he brings up that her Twitter statement upset him because of the way that he now realizes that he's been viewed. And I feel terrible reading those words knowing that you think that about me. I would never think that I'm owed anything from anyone just because I have a YouTube channel, especially in an intimate context. Again, I'm really sorry for this and it actually has been pretty eye-opening to me and it's just not how I've ever really thought about stuff before. And I don't really think you're wrong for assuming that I thought like this because obviously there are people out there that think like that and use that to take advantage of people. And it makes sense that if you think that about me that you would hate me. But that is not who I am at all, and I just really hope that you can understand that. These statements from George could either be seen as a heartfelt, eye-opening realisation that he's been placed on this pedestal by people who know him, they inherently view him differently because of his size, regardless of who he truly is, or it could be seen as a classic example of the appeal to emotion fallacy. Essentially, it could be that George is trying to sway the tide of this discourse by guilt-tripping viewers into taking sympathy towards him. Which of these it truly is, George is the only one that could possibly know that for sure, so judge it as you please. George then makes more claims regarding his obliviousness towards her age, saying that he didn't see her name in her rage in DMs because she had a business account, which to the best of my knowledge would make sense through her DMs. That said, this still wouldn't clear up the fact that it would have taken him more than a month to discover her true age. Again, this is all speculative, but I just don't buy that George was romantically interested in a girl and then checked her profile once. I think that it's much more likely that he either missed it on several different occasions or knew her age and didn't seem to care. Also, if you want to believe George's story, you then have to believe that himself and Dream just never spoke about his romantic interest in Katie, or that if they ever did, Dream just never thought it would be useful information to mention that she's 18 years old, because Dream for sure knew her age. According to Katie, everyone saw them getting physical. According to George, they were on the couch cuddling for hours. Dream knew her age. Surely he knows that George is romantically interested in her, and we just have to assume now, based upon George's story, that they just never spoke about it the next day, they just woke up, went about their day. They lived together, man! Surely at one point, Dream would go, hmm, George, you're interested in Katie, do you know that she's 18 years old? Because you're 26, it's a bit weird. And George just, George just, apparently he just didn't know for a month? A month, really? Her last message to me was August 1st, 2023. August 1st, 2023. George admits within his second response that it was irresponsible of him to assume all of the girls were over 21 without making sure of it. He also brings up the discussion about the wristband, which I'm curious to talk about. George confirms that his initial point about the wristband was incorrect. I also brought up how when I was going back through the texts, I found a picture of one of them wearing a 21 plus age wristband. And I showed this picture. It is now mentioned that Katie wasn't actually the one that was wearing it and it was just someone else's hand. To reiterate my problem to his response though, he never said that he remembered anyone wearing it, he just said that he found a picture where they had it on, which could indicate that this is a defence that he found upon review. He didn't actually think about it in the moment. And this would make sense because he never outwardly said who he saw wearing this wristband, possibly because he didn't actually know. Despite what you might think, this video in general was actually quite well received. As of the time I released this video, Katie still has not responded. She said that she would on the 12th of March and that her follow-up would be released a week later. It's now nearing two weeks and radio silence. The chances are that this response will be released any day now, but unless any insane claims or evidence come out, I feel as though by now most people would have made up their minds about it. If she does release something crazy, then maybe I'll follow it up but probably not. 
Please don't send any hate to anyone involved in this. This incident is impossible for anyone outside the room to know all of the details about, but I hope that this video has been a refreshing, nuanced take on where the pair disagreed. With that said, please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already yet and you enjoyed it. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you later.